Hello and welcome everyone. Today we are going to um, explore different types of parameter smoothing. So this is a developer focused video. Now if you imagine um, parameters and the way the, their values change, then you can think of that like a signal. And it's often shown as a signal as well in the door when you are writing automation. So you typically have these types of automations where you would um, go from some value to another one linearly or you have one where you're just trying to jump on a new value very quickly as quickly as possible to be precise and then you have those types of automations where someone just um, you know turned the knob and then um, instantly took exactly that curve because it's natural and you also sometimes have modulation on the parameters like in Bitwig with the modulators. In this case it, sh it should be a, a sine wave. So the way the parameters are being smoothed inside of the plugin has to be good so that it can you know deal with all these different cases. Now um, there are a lot of audio blocks in uh, a plugin and they can be bigger or smaller. There can be very little chunks of these and also very big distances. Yeah, you can see that it's, it can be all over the place. Now what do I want to say with that is um, we are looking at uh, four or five different smoothing types in this video and the first one of these is the no smoothing type where you always get one parameter value at the start of each block. The only problem then is that you have to wait until every next block to get the next parameter type and then it's essentially as if you had a sound that looks like this curve even though you have this curve. So it's not very smooth. Let me show you how that sounds in an example. I made a little plug in here, which is a delay. And when I, I have a parameter here where I can change the smoothing type. And when I use no smoothing, it sounds like this. Now you might be asking, why can you hear the individual blocks so clearly? That is because in my um, in the settings of my sound card I chose high latency and I think that is a good way to to um, test these kinds of things because first of all high latency is good for CPU usage so everyone who is a real power user in plugins will put their uh, latency up when they are in a deep beat making sound design or mixing session so that they have more resources available but they also have to deal with um, unsmooth parameters more than. So we have to sort of find a different way to, you know, do that. So the next thing that I have in here is the block based um, smoothing, which would mean that every time a new block uh, has been reached, we're not jumping to, the, to that value directly, but we're just going from the last value to that value down and then um, that creates a curve that is not um, that is not steppy anymore it doesn't go boom 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 but it does go in the same shape as this automation but it also does that in in a very fast way like you cannot um, you cannot decide how fast it should be and it can create weird shapes let's say we are here then this would go to um, to this place, you know, and then we would go here, and then we would go here, and yeah, whatever. So th that's the shape that would yield that would be yielded by um, by those blocks when they are smoothened like that and that th doesn't look anything like a sine wave anymore even though there was a sine wave here. Now how does it sound? <laughs> it 
Um, yeah, so the problem with both nose moving and blocks moving is that their sound is highly dependent on the size of the current block. So it will not yield the same sound for every user but only for the users who use the exactly same block size. And also when we consider that every door uses blocks differently then it also sounds different in every door. Like in FL Studio where you have these very variable block sizes that can be really really small at um, a lot of times uh, you would get a much tighter sound than with a lot of other types of um, um, blocks. Now that's why we want to have uh, a smoothing type that is independent of the block and the first one that might come to your mind is linearly interpolating so it's basically similar to this but instead of being dependent on the block you are making yourself dependent on some set size that you decide yourself like you say it has to be this long and then um, yeah and then it will always be like that length and then it would maybe do something like that and then that and uh, da -da 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 -da. You know, it will always have sort of the same gradient as it has the same length. And here it will do something wild, I cannot draw that. Um, that sounds a little bit better. And now you have a parameter for the length of the smoothing. You can make it really short. Which, which sounds like a, a Reißverschluss, we would say in Germany. You know, on a jacket. Um, zipper noise, yeah, that's it. Now, on the longer smoothing lengths, we can hear that it does give us a consistent sound, and we now know it is independent of the block, which is pretty cool. And, um,. And it's also just, uh, yeah, how, how can I say it? Um, it's already good that, that it's platform independent and stuff. And it does sound smooth in some way. But it also has an issue, especially in the context of this delay. It um, creates a very weird sound because resampling a delay changes the playback speed. And if you are changing the playback speed of something, um, in a linear way, then that is, then that's a pitch shifter, and um, so it sounds like it sounds a bit as if we had a pitch shifter where we would automate the pitch um, parameter in st in a steppy way. Even though I'm not doing any anything steppy here, but I'm just moving the delay around. So when this creates a steppy sound, then what does not? And the answer is a low pass filter. So if we use a low pass filter, then it will always create a smooth curve from everything. And um, smoothens out this curve as well. And smoothing out a sine wave would just make it less intense, but it would still be a sine wave. So that would be the, the low pass filter. Let's go. Now we can um, also try to reduce the smoothing length here because we do want to have the tightest smoothing possible. So now we have found a setting that sort of works, 40 milliseconds for the smoothing length of a low pass filter. And you have heard that there are zipper noises on the lower volumes as well, but how do they compare to linear zipper noises? <laughs> Th 
they sound very similar so um, it doesn't make a lot of a difference if you have the linear zipper noises or the low pass filter zipper noises they all sound like artifacts that you don't want to have then I also have a 2x low pass filter here so basically two low pass filters in series to just see how it compares <laughs> Now of course you can go much lower with a milliseconds when you have two um, low pass filters in series because that is basically as if you were to increase the slope of a low pass filter and also shift the cut off a little bit more to the left. Um, and yeah, so now that we have you know settled this we can make a little um, conclusion which is no smoothing is bad and block smoothing is bad as well just in general and linear smoothing well it might be okay sometimes but low pass filtering is um, really good and even more low pass filtering for even more smoothness is also really good now you might be asking yourself what um, what does it look like in the code you know because you want to know how performant it is I cannot show you any benchmarks because this is plug and script where everything performs terrible anyway. But you can look at the code and just think to yourself what what you think of it. So here's my smoothing namespace. Here's the block based smoothing. The parameter value just goes in and also a buffer where I want to write the you know the smoothing into uh, across num samples. And this is basically if the current value is the same value as x then just copy the stuff no? and else we are doing a little bit of a calculation here difference basically the, the path that has to take and the increment value to get there and then we are doing the same thing essentially and at the end of the buffer we know that we reached our value so that's how the block based thing works it's probably um, the best performance ever now we have oh, okay this this is old this is not not um, the case anymore what I wrote in that comment now we have this linear thingy and I'm not sure if I wrote that in the most efficient way yet but I don't like it because for every sample we have to look if some face value is over one yet because it like it's like um, it decides where we are if we are closer to the start or the end value of the current modulation and uh, yeah if we have reached the end of the phase then that means that we are either not using smoothing anymore because we're on the same value as x or we have a new x value and you know just start over again with all these things set a new start a new end uh, calculate the range set the phase back to zero uh, make a new increment value and then for each sample once all that is done we are actually putting something into the buffer and going on with the phase so um oh yeah and did i use this still no I, I didn't use this method down here anymore also not this bool as i see so we can actually reduce what's going on here a little bit but still i don't like it for every sample so many ifs and then else that that just can't be good um now what do the what does the low pass filter look like it looks like this you are going in there with um, your parameter value um, and with the length so in case that the length has to be updated this is be called, being called but we can disregard or is that the right word we can ignore that so to say because you know in a final production you don't give the user the parameter of the parameter smoothing uh, you are basically setting that in prepare to play uh, but I have it here because I want to be able to update it and what and if you want to be able to do that too Then you would just have to go through something like this. Uh, it's in samples and there is this little calculation with X and set X uh, updating that is just this and What happens for each sample? Well just this so no if statements or anything. It's just a simple low pass filter a simple one pole low pass filter and that's kinda crazy I think because one would think that a linear smoother 
is better for the resources. But I could just not think of a way to make this any um, shorter for some reason. It's just it just has to be this complicated. I thought I would end up with um, implementation that makes this more performant because there is this state where no smoothing is needed so we can you know just um, basically put into the buffer X directly but then I realized that it doesn't matter if this state exists because um, you have to deal with all these variables anyway or, or I made a mistake that is just really silly I don't know but even if you were able to write rewrite the linear smoother in a way that is more efficient it cannot beat the low pass filter a lot because this is just one multiplication one addition and another multiplication and that's it so that is not really anything nowadays anymore and yeah even putting two um, low pass filters in series I cannot imagine that it makes any difference. Now I want to go through some very specific things that um, oh what's that index out of bounds it looks like I'm still having a mistake somewhere in my DSP code what was it 173 oh this variable why would this one be wrong? Well, anyway, I don't, I don't want to deal with that now. The, the way numbers are crunched in AngelScript can sometimes be a little bit odd. So I hope I'm just fixing it like this. Yeah, seems to be working. Okay, that was weird, but let's just ignore that for now because that's not what this video is about. What I wanted to show you is what happens if I'm using um, a randomizer to randomize that parameter. As you can see now, I'm, I'm jumping around with this parameter in steppy steps. And you can change that to fluid steps as well, but I'm keeping it on steppy steps and I'm making it quite fast as well. Tempo sync and everything. And now let's play back. Now I wanted to show you that because I'm all no smoothing sounded the best here. You, I know there were these little clicks, but you could, you know, ma implement some sort of windowing. So if you wanted to make a plugin that has an internal step sequencer like this, no matter if randomized or not, just with the same shape, with a steppy shape, then you would not be uh, smoothing your delay buffer you would actually just implement some sort of windowing to go with your no smoothing sequence huh? because it just sounds nice when it jumps over immediately the problem here with the linear smoothing is that uh, due to the fact that these that this is all just the same type of modulation steps uh, it, it became becomes very apparent that there that the linear smoother always has the same pitch that it adds to the signal depending on its smoothing length and that's kind of weird now the low pass filters still make most sense especially low pass 2x um, in case that you just want to round off the modulation <laughs> make some sort of vibrato from that uh, now 
Next thing we wanna look at is LFOs, LFO type modulation. Uh, which one was it? Oops, wrong parameter. This one. All right, let's listen to this. <laughs> Now that was interesting too because in this example block based smoothing actually sounded better than the linear one because it was just very immediate and together with the sine shape it just made a lot of sense because sine waves are also om almost like linear um, modulation almost and um, especially if you put it into small enough chunks and uh, the linear one was much more audible as as the smoother. We don't want the smoothing to be um, apparent or in the user's face. The, they, the user doesn't, shouldn't be thinking about the parameter smoothing. It, it just has to fit the parameter. Now the, the LFOs, uh, I mean the low pass filters made sense too, but when they are not tuned to the same frequency of the LFO then even they also become very apparent and it sounds a little bit odd. <laughs> And also, just like before, a low pass 2x seems to give us a little bit more safety in that regard. We can go very low with the values before it starts sounding crunchy. And it's still quite fast. So, um, yeah. The reason why I made this video was, at the moment, I have to learn for university. I actually didn't even plan to make new content, but... I'm already planning a lot of new plug-in ideas that just come to my mind while I'm learning because my brain tries to procrastinate from the boring stuff and it does that very successfully and gives me a lot of ideas. But I realized for some of these ideas I would have to rethink my parameter smoothing approach first because else I cannot keep on working on that. Or I would have to rewrite everything later. And um, I was, up until now, I was using low pass filter 1, so just one low pass filter to um, smoothen parameters. And what I wanted to find out here was especially if linear parameter smoothing sounds, really sounds worse, or if it actually sounds pretty much the same and if it performs better. I think both of these things are debunked now, uh, more or less, you know, we can still not say a lot about the performance or if this could be implemented better, but all in all the sound is just so much less useful, um, so I cannot really um, confidently say that I would use linear smoothing for parameters if I had to generalize this for all parameters. Now of course we can discard block and no smooth entirely so if anything in the DSP processor needs no smoothing then um, like this step sequencer thing then this can still be implemented inside of the plugin by just ignoring um, the parameter smoothing um, and block base is just silly that is never really useful or used now, I'm thinking, should I actually use two low pass filters on every single parameter in a project? Because I think, even though it's a very simple low pass filter, it could really add up. Um, and yeah, I was thinking of parameters that could be 
even interpreted in stereo so then there would have to be four parameters for every per um, four smoothing low pass filters for every parameter that could be a little bit much in a big plug-in but um, yeah I'm not sure yet I just wanted to make a little experiment to get a little bit more ideas to think about when I keep on learning and and I took this opportunity to also make a little bit of content for you all so that um, so that we can all learn a little bit about parameter smoothing and consider that for the future of our plugins. Now in order to do these tests I wrote this script for plugin script as you have seen and yeah this is where you see the parameters and stuff like that I think I will actually upload it to my PNS Fundgrube repository where I didn't upload um, a lot of stuff uh, lately even though there was this bug that sometimes crashes the script for a reason that I don't know yet I think I will just upload this to my repository because it's more or less very useful has a lot of math helpers some of which I didn't even use has some interpolators I only used Cubica meets spline because I wanted to be sure that it sounds smooth without the smoothing already as smooth as possible then it has these three different um, smoothing types and in the DSP namespace it has a right hat, a read hat and a feed forward delay that can be very useful for you know all kinds of stuff and little tests like this so I guess it's a good addition to the other things even though I already have some delays in there um, yeah 